Dear brothers and sisters, this is a homily for third Sunday of Advent 2021. This Sunday is also called Gaudete Sunday, meaning Joyful Sunday. What must we do is a question message that dominates in the liturgy of the word, more particularly the gospel passage. Indeed, it is our question also during this Advent season before Christmas, for example, parishioners ask themselves, what must we do to celebrate Christmas better? Family members may ask themselves, what must we do during this festive season this time round? Professionals also may ask themselves, what must we do differently during this Christmas season? In all cases, this is a real question that preoccupies us and it helps us to better prepare for Christ's coming. On this Gaudete Sunday, we are going to reflect on two messages as preached by John the Baptist which will help us to hope and trust in Christ's coming. In the first reading, what must the people of Israel do? They are invited to rejoice because God will forgive their iniquities, renew them by their love, and he will be present among them. But for us, Christ's return, is it enough reason to rejoice too? It is. But more importantly, Christ's presence in our life is remarkable as experienced particularly through the holy sacraments that we receive at Holy Mass. Yes, he is present, therefore we are invited to rejoice. On the other hand, which rejoicing is the passage talking of? In fact, this true joy should not be confused with a laughter of a drunkard. However, it is the joy or inner satisfaction rooted in the Lord, as St. Paul points out in the second reading, rejoice in the Lord. Let us rejoice because Christmas, the commemoration of Christ's birth, is near, for Christ will be present in our life if we welcome him with well-disposed hearts. Turning to the gospel passage, we find John the Baptist preparing people to welcome the Messiah. He simply did so by baptizing and preaching to them the good news, which is Christ's coming. In the passage, the preaching of John is in the dialogue form, which is dominated by the question, what must we do? Moreover, the three groups of people, after listening to John's preaching, they asked him, what must we do? Note here that the question carries the communitarian aspect as indicated by we. In a summary way, from this preaching of John the Baptist in this passage, we can distinguish two main aspects, namely ethical aspect and secondly, messianic aspect. Let's begin with ethical aspect. In the first instance, the first group to react by saying to John the Baptist, what must we do, was the multitude or the crowd. What is proposed to them is interesting in terms of having a stable society today. In other words, John's message is clear because he advocates conversion of the heart. After baptism, which is an external manifestation of conversion, one is required to change his or her actions. In a more concrete way, John proposes to all the three groups, the crowd, the tax collectors, and the soldiers to live in harmony and peace with their neighbors. This implies that the one who has no basic needs, such as clothing and food, they should be provided for, hence sharing. Again worth noting, the tax collectors 
the soldiers and other professionals are invited to be just and respectful in their work. Here, John the Baptist invites the professionals not to abandon their work or change their professions, but to change their way of dealing with their clients. That is the true conversion, the inner convictions which manifests itself in the external actions. The soldiers were told by John to be contented with their salaries. Are you contented with who you are, what you have, and whom you live with? Be contented with what you earn during this festive season, and of course, work hard to get more in a justified way. What must we do before Christmas as a parish, as a family, as an institution, and as an individual? Let us share with the needy our basic needs because sharing is caring, caring is loving, loving is godly, and God is love. The last aspect in John's preaching is about the Messiah. In this passage from verses 15 to 18, the question responded to is what God is going to do. John had preached about eschatology in verses 7 to 9, and that is why people asked if he was the Messiah. In other words, people experienced Advent fulfilled because they thought that John is the Messiah announced in the old prophecies. In order to satisfy their curiosity, John responded by defining himself as the one who will decrease so as the Messiah increases. John was baptizing with water, but the Messiah will baptize with the Holy Spirit and fire which would be fulfilled on Pentecost Day, Acts chapter 2. In addition to that, the Messiah will separate the good people from the bad ones at the end of time. Hence, John the Baptist reminds his listeners to live and expect a Messiah soon. Therefore, they are invited to live a hopeful and joyful Advent because the Messiah will come soon. To conclude, on this third Sunday of Advent, we are invited to be joyful because the loving God is present and has sent us his only son, Jesus Christ, to redeem us. What must we do during this Advent period? Let us not only be prepared physically, but more so share with the poor, pray, visit the sick, and clothe the naked in our society. The two verbs used by John the Baptist in his preaching are so important to us today that is to exhort one another and to announce the good news. Amen. Have a blessed Sunday.